Welcome to TJ's podcast. Hey. Glad you're here. TJ's podcast, two radio legends trying to uh, trying to make it in the podcast world, talking about things that uh, that are interesting to us because if it's interesting to us, it's interesting to you. We're going to make it that. This is my little friend Riggins. Hey, good morning. Hey. There's my little buddy over there. Hey. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're we're going to um, we're going to start today with um, some stupid celebrity stuff. Riggins had a question this morning. Uh, the question was, um, who has ever had anything bad to say about Barefoot Contessa? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Ina Gartner. Well, I have. I mean, I, have you? Nothing like you know about her being up to no good or anything, but just that you know her shows and her type of cooking and all was just not interesting to me. Yeah, you know, because I I love cooking shows and like, before there was um, cooking on social media, I was Mister Cooking Show and uh, loved Food Network and and all of that. People, but always, I never liked her show. People say, "Oh, I wish they would bring back the old Food Network." Yeah, I do the too. The old shows like that. Yeah. They, but what they started doing is getting into too many competition shows and yeah. you know all of that. Um, but uh, I, my favorite shows on the old Food Network were Emerald Live. Yeah, that was that was probably um, a tie for Emerald Live and Good Eats yeah. on Food Network. I liked um, Everyday Italian. Oh, you know, with Giada. Giada, it's my girl. She's been um, in the news a lot lately. This yeah. week. What she do other than she was just, be adorable? Yeah, she's just talking about why she left Food Network and how it was really, what was the word? She was really challenging. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Uh, and I, uh, I didn't care much for Bobby Flay because it was competition. Yeah, you know, I never liked the competition. Cheat Bobby Flay. Yeah. Um, it was oh, I used to like um, Tyler Florence. Yeah, his good. show, his old show on there. But anyway, I I never had anything to say badly about uh, Barefoot Contessa about Ina Gartner as far as she's a you know a B or anything like that. No, just didn't find her show as interesting. It wasn't my cup of tea. But there's a um, a woman here on the TikTok, a young woman who wears uh, big headphones, yeah. walking down the street and talking into her phone and she's got this information about um ina gartner i never knew garten garten not gartner garten i never knew that uh -uh. so i was shocked to hear it does anyone else think there's something sketchy about little miss barefoot contessa over here oh my god it's so fun i'm gonna ruin so many people's nights um ina garten uh little miss barefoot contessa we all know and love um, <laughs> it's not funny. Um, turned down a Make-A-Wish kid, a six-year-old leukemia patient named Enzo, who asked two times to just do a cooking session with her, um, and she turned him down twice. When news uh, inevitably broke about this, this is around 2011, she tried to reach back out to this cancer kid's family and the Make-A-Wish Foundation uh, and be like, wait, 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 I'll do it. And they said, never mind. Yikes. Wow. Yikes. And I don't know that to be true. I don't know. Should have said that to begin with. That this, we don't, uh, I didn't look up the documentation of that. Uh, but uh, let me go back to something else. I, I can't believe I um, left this out of my list of old Food Network shows. Um, Paula Dean's show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that was that was right up there with Emerald and um, and Good Eats for me. Uh, but first of all, a six-year-old boy. I get that they he likes to cook and stuff like that, but why would he pick her? Why would you pick of her? all of the the um, you know yeah. TV chefs? Kind of a snob. Yeah, it doesn't Hamptons. seem like she's. Yeah, she what? she doesn't seem like a 
Uh, it's like the same with Martha Stewart. You wouldn't picture yeah. Martha Stewart to be a warm type of. Now, Emerald, if you picked sure. Emerald, Emerald's like big personality. Come on in. He's, he's actually written cookbooks for kids. Things like that. Guy Fieri going to oh, a, yeah. going in the Camaro to one right. of his diners, drivings and dives. Mm-hmm. Even like Paula Dean would be great. Sure. But I just don't. Guy. She's just so monotone. What's her husband's name? Jeffrey. And I'm I'm gonna have this ready for Jeffrey when I'm he gets home. I'm making a fabulous pasta for for when Jeffrey gets home with his <laughs> friends. He loves roast chicken on Friday nights. So, but I wonder what her reasoning was I know. for not doing it. You think it could have been, because if I do one, I'm going to have to do Because, you know, kids love me so much. Yeah, I mean, it's like. You I'll have to do be, a thousand of them a day if I do one. It's not like it's happening a day, right. on a daily basis that she's getting a request from Make-A-Wish. You're not John Cena. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that's crazy. If it's true. It, and, well, I, I did quickly Google Oh, you did? It. Yeah, it, it, it does appear to be true. <laughs> I just can't find the time. Mm. We're going to use a good mayonnaise here. It's very important. But yeah, also, six-year-old. Who? Yeah, what yeah. six-year-old is watching that? And you know, maybe that's what she said. This six-year-old doesn't really want to spend the day with me. This is his mom who's a fan oh, that's yeah. wanting, you know, to use her kid to, you know. And we've dealt with that before. Sure. You know, as big-time radio celebrities. Where, um, you know, the the moms will re- would reach out to us to say, you know, come my uh, my kids' preschool class would love it if you guys came and and talked to them about radio and all that, and we'd get there and they had no the kids had no idea who we were, but all the moms were lined up in the back of the room laughing, taking pictures and stuff. Which is fine. Okay, I, I love to be appreciated by the mamas. Absolutely. You know, in love with the mamas, addicted to the commas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, there's a crazy update. So when ABC News wrote the story about how she turned him down twice because of scheduling issues, she's yeah. very busy. Uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation spokesperson said, uh, the family's moving on. He's actually going to fulfill his dream to uh, swim with the dolphins. <laughs> So Ina Garten, you're a real piece of crap. <laughs> That's what he really wanted. Yeah, He's like, you know what? I'd be fine swimming with the dolphins mm-hmm. as well. Oh gosh, that must have made her feel this tall. Would it though? Maybe. It yeah, would I, certainly because make I, me feel I'm, that I'm way. asking that seriously because I know nothing about her personality. I've never seen her interviewed. Only the only thing I know about her is just clips that I've seen of her show uh, when I would turn it on Food Network back in the day, as the kids yeah. say. And she would be on, and then I'd watch for a second, and then I'd move well, on with we something else. we know she doesn't else. have any kids of her own. She doesn't. She seems pretty, from what you can gather, she seems pretty icy. She's a little stoic, is she? A little stoic, a little cool, a little like Martha Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, Bless. And my brother had cancer when he was six years old, seven years old. And I'm like, why didn't he get a Make-A-Wish? They never, I don't know. I think you have, you have to be terminal. Oh, do you have to be I on, think on your deathbed? It used to be that way. Not on your deathbed, but you had to be terminal. Because it's supposed to be like your your last big wish. Yeah. Which makes it even worse if that's yeah. the case. If I, I could be wrong about how make a wish works, but I always thought it was their last wish. I was about to get mad at my brother. I'm like, I could have met somebody cool through you. Yeah. If you had just And you remember when I was so into all of that stuff and Paula Dean came to the to the show. Yeah. <clears throat> and the girl that worked on the staff at the radio station at that time was a huge fan. And she came in and just started monopolizing all of Paula's time, like during the breaks when I'm trying to talk to her about stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. She's like up in her face. And, I mean, uh, and then when you do this and this and this and this, I was like, somebody get her out of here. Hey, please, this is my time. Yeah. This is my time. Am I uh am I baby up there too? Yeah. Get a picture with Paula Dean? Sure. Is there a a person, like if God forbid you're on your last legs, is there somebody, like one person you'd be like, I'd really like to meet them before I go? Mm. That's alive. You know, not like Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Uh I don't think like get a little FaceTime with I don't know, John Kennedy or something. 
Senator John Kennedy. Senator. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Really? No. Because I would, I, I live in that world of if I like a celebrity or I admire them, that if I met them, they would not live up to or they would not be nice, you know? Now, in the in the business, when I meet celebrities, if we've interviewed them or whatever, that's one thing. But if I'm just dying to meet a celebrity and I met them, it would probably be like, oh. Um, Will Ferrell wasn't that way, though. He was very, very cool. Super, super nice to us. But I can't think of any that I would want to chance that with to think. Like, I'm, I've always been a huge, huge fan of jerry seinfeld mm -hmm. but i don't think jerry seinfeld would be cool to meet and hang out with i mean i just don't you know I, I, he might be a little nicer considering you're on your you know your last like he might yeah. he might put on a happy face and try to tell you some jokes but maybe not and it may be because um i know he's as cynical as i am yeah and so what's when, the deal with all these yeah. tubes but when somebody <laughs> When somebody is who is cynical and sarcastic all the time, and then they're serious about something, then it's kind of hard to break through. And yeah. go, oh, you're not serious or anything like that. Or it's hard to um, to take them seriously when they are being genuine and excited about, yeah. you know, and and, and childlike in, in wonderment. Sure. Um, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I would like uh, Alton Brown. Yeah, that'd be cool. He'd be fun. Yeah. He'd be fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or he could be one of those, um, you know, brainy. Yeah. You know, who's only fun in front of the camera or, or doing something. He yeah, could yeah. just be like a, a nerd, complete nerd sure. that's not friendly. Yeah, nothing worse than that. Yeah, especially when you're about to die. Yeah. You don't want to be disappointed right before you die. You're a nerd and you're not friendly? Yeah. Oof. All right, so we'll take a break. We've got more uh, coming up. We're going to do the Graham Slam in a few minutes, so hang on for that. TJ's Podcast. Our friend, the world-famous Richard Takato, I'm sorry, Richard Takato is uh, here with us. And um, thank you so much for reaching out to Richard. We, he's telling us all the time about how many listeners are, are reaching out and saying, hey, Show me about that refi, and let's do some stuff like that. That's the way you put it, though. Show me yeah, about, that yeah, yeah, about that refi. <laughs> what, what you got about that refi? <laughs> the, uh, so the, I mean, the cool thing is, is as Ace has said, we have a lot of options, and we have, re, you know, I'm doing refinances for people. You know, we have people down in Greenville, North Carolina. We have them you know, all, you know, at the beach at South Carolina. We have them in Charlotte. And the main thing is to refinance, make their finances better, make it take the stress of every month. You know, if I save them seven hundred dollars a month, eight hundred dollars a month, it's a big deal for them. Yeah, it's a real big deal. Seven hundred dollars a month. That's fantastic. And again, yeah. we've talked about this before. Richard's a broker. That's how he gets more options than a bank. Yeah. He can do more. Just go to homewithrichard.com to get started. Homewithrichard.com, the Richard Takato Companies. Hey, it's Ace, and for a long time, we've told you about Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic, and how phenomenal a job they did helping me with my left wrist. Well, this is Neil. Neil Simler is a member of the Ace and TJ Radio family. Neil, you took the free consultation to have them check out your elbow and talk about what happened just when you went for the free consultation. Uh, they were very straightforward and let me know that they weren't going to treat any of my ailments if they weren't 100% sure that they were going to be able to effectively help my issue and uh, never weren't once were they pushy with trying to get me to spend more money and do, you know, the, the higher end shots. Now, three months later, how do you feel? I'm 95% better, if not 100%. You know, it, it's just been one of the best decisions I've made. Do yourself a favor, get out there as soon as possible. Set up your free consultation today at acetj.com slash neogenics. It's N-E-O-G-E-N-I-X. Neogenics, Charlotte's most trusted stem cell clinic. They say there are only two things certain in life, sweet deals at sweet dreams and taxes. And only one of those is certain this month. Which one? The sweet deals at sweet dreams. What about the taxes? No sales tax the entire month of April at Sweet Dreams. Are you serious? Yeah. And don't call me Shirley. Love where you live, Lake Norman, and pay no sales tax during the month of April. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back 
to TJ's podcast. Yo. Okay, we do something called the Gram Slam every day. It's where we go around the um, the internets, your TikToks and whatnot, and uh, and we break it down. That's what we do, man. We break it down. We're we're um, basically uh, social media analysts. When you think that would be something we would be considered rigging social media analysts? Yeah, in some ways. Let's go with that. Okay. Radio legends doing a podcast while being social media analysts. I like it. Analysts. And yeah. So one of the um, one of of the very few um, wholesome things that uh, goes on in our popular culture right now that is uh, that is trendy is how much people have grown to love um people who are on the autism spectrum my wife and i and my little friend jenny and handsome husband michael will get together and watch those uh, love on the spectrum shows just yeah, heartwarming and fun funny um there's a guy from the last uh edition of that who lives uh in south carolina he's in the clemson area uh his name's tanner and we're constantly talking about tanner because he's so sweet and uh and everything that happens to him he's just wide-eyed and it's just so great and he's he's such a, a sweet mannerly guy um, and then there are also those that, um, because each, each person acts differently, um, who, uh, you know, people who are living uh, with autism and sometimes the, the fun part of it is just how honest they are, you know, <laughs> and this is the case as a woman in Alabama who, whose mother is, um, going in for surgery and she has a, her son with her that's on the uh, on the spectrum and she's gotten him to wish the grandmother good luck with her surgery and all of that and um it is so funny listen Tina, hope you don't die well <coughs> while doing surgery <laughs> but if you do it's perfectly fine with me <laughs> It's not fun with me. We're praying for you this morning, and we love you. <laughs> it's perfectly I hope you fine. Don't die, yeah. <laughs> but if you do, it's perfectly fine. Uh, okay. And that, you know, <clears throat> that is um, just a textbook of what uh, the people on those shows, reality show. Um, where these uh, adults who are on the spectrum, there, um, there's a matchmaker service that's trying to find them, um, you know, companions. Yeah, and uh, and it really is good. What's the? Um, is her name Abby? Yeah, the and one she's become really TikTok famous. Star. Yeah, she's got it. I think she. I saw an ad pop up with her, and I think she's promoting L'Oreal. Yeah, or like a major beauty brand just doing her makeup. Mm -hmm. and I was like. That is awesome. And she's another one that's just brutally honest and, and all. But uh, I think she had started a little bit of a, you know, of a social media following before she was on the show. Yeah. And she's one of the um, one of the um, success stories from, you know, being hooked up in the relationship. Her boyfriend's name is David and they were fixed up on the show. And when you watch the show, you kind of get the idea because I think they were on two seasons, both both seasons of the America version. Um, when you see the show, you automatically go, oh, David's family must have some money. Yeah, <laughs> because every time he sees her, he's bringing her another gift. And, and they're they're both obsessed with uh, the Lion King and Disney and, and all of that. So. Um, his family took his his family took her family on a big safari in Africa and all these kinds of things and so um, they are together and smoochy and and all of that but 
but yeah, she's she's the same way, and she'll tell him, "I don't like this," <laughs> or you know, talking to her mom and saying, you know, she doesn't like something, or her mom should do this or do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a uh, a lot of them. You'll say, "Well, they've decided they went on their date, or they've decided to just be friends and and all that." But they're still together. This is my boyfriend. This is my girlfriend. That's awesome. They probably end up getting married someday. But yeah, she's probably rolling in it now. I think so. Yeah, because I mm. her videos pop up all the time uh, on my for you page, and yeah, the other day I saw I thought Lori, it's like a major beauty brand. Yeah, right? good for her. Mm -hmm. Good for her. That's but, awesome. Um, can you imagine when you're dating a girl? Every time you see her, you take her a gift, a nice gift. That'd be great to be able to do that. When yeah, but I think I, in some of the episodes now, I've seen her. Uh, when she sees him coming up to her house or whatever, what'd you bring me? <laughs> yeah, just like expecting See, a gift. You, gotta, you, know, you don't want to spoil them like that. That's the thing. <laughs> you don't want to spoil them. Because I know a guy who sends his wife a dozen roses every Friday. Really? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Is Have they been married a long time? Mm-hmm. Yep. What does she do with last week's roses? I don't know. But, um, but he says that you know, it's to the point where she expects it. And if he, if something were to happen, and he said, I've never missed a Friday, but if I did, she would think that I'd been in an accident or something. I bet you would, just like it were anything yeah. else. Uh, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so she probably just throws out the old one. She's like, well, they're gonna, I'm going to have new ones every Friday. I'll just yeah. toss them. Red roses? Uh, I think so, yeah. Wow. Whatever she likes. I love that. Yeah. If you're able to do stuff like that, I think that's great. Yeah, there is Rayleigh. They're Israeli. Mm -hmm. Is she fine? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. I guess do they have roses in Israel? I have no idea. Maybe that's <laughs> one of the big draws. Never seen. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen these yeah, before. I want gonna, them every week. We're now. gonna go to America, and when we get there, I, if you support me in this move, I'll give you roses every Friday. Yeah, that's incredible. every week. Does yeah. Jody like flowers? She does. She doesn't like roses. Yeah, my mom doesn't either. And she um she likes uh, you know, whatever seasonal bouquet. Yeah. And she would rather me just bring them home than, yeah. you know, have them delivered and, and all of that yeah, kind of stuff. There's something kind of impersonal about just having them delivered. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's still an incredible gesture. Yeah. But to have them hand delivered is m more meaningful. And she's all into orchids. We got know, orchids all over the house now. My friend Mark got her into that. Yeah, I hate orchids. I do hate them. Are they creepy? They're creepy. They have roots that grow, you know, outside of the dirt. I just, and they need a stick to, I just don't like them. But people that love orchids are obsessed with orchids. They also need tiny hair clips on them. Yeah, they got to stake mm -hmm. them to the thing. And you water them with ice cubes, I've seen. I don't know. It's like, no, you're not supposed to do that. That's, that's a wrong? that's a myth. Yeah. Okay. People, a lot of people have done that and thinking that that's the thing to do. But my friend Mark is an orchid expert. Yeah. And uh, he said, you think about it, they're tropical plants. So, you wouldn't put ice on tropical plants. You right. know, you don't, you don't do that. And there's a certain way you can cut them when they die yeah, and make them bloom again. And it's just, it's a, it's a science project basically. Yeah. 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 All the time. Huh. But, uh, she had one that died out and a uh, handsome husband, Michael was making fun of her about it. So she went into the bedroom and got a one that we had just bought that was all bloomy and everything. And uh, she put it in that place, and then he came over the next week, and she was like, "Look, uh -huh, Michael, you said that my orchid wasn't going to come back." And he looked at it, and he goes, "That's a different orchid. <laughs> Don't try to <laughs> trick like, me. The pot's a different color. <laughs> what are you doing?" <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but um, that guy that um, in I don't remember the town, but anyway, in North Carolina, he he is the orchid expert, and he provides the orchids for the masters every year. I told you that. Mm -hmm. Um, he'll take them back. Like if they die, he'll give you so much money back for them toward another, another orchid. That's awesome. Cause then he knows how to get them to bloom again and he sure. resells them. So think about how much I bet he was wanting to do that all the time for people. Hey, make sure if it dies, you bring it back and I'll give you half your money back for it. Yeah. Then he resells it at full price. All he's got to do is just clip it and let it wait a few days. Cause he knows how to do it. Yeah. That's awesome. When mm -hmm. I worked in the grocery store, there was a floral department, and they had the hottest girl working there. And she wasn't super busy all day because she, she was in the floral department. Yeah. So she would stand behind the counter and just kind of fiddle with the leaves every once in a while. I'm like, is that her whole job is to just kind of <laughs> blow up balloons and 
and poke at the flowers, the the ten potted plants that are over there, and they're like, "Yeah, I need that job." She was yeah. so hot and didn't talk to anybody. Flower girl, flower girl. Oh, she stole my heart. Are they generally hot though? I I at don't grocery know. Grocery stores and all. I don't know. She was hot though. She was real hot. Yeah, you would think there's not a lot to do in the floral department of a grocery store because I mean the selection of it is. Whatever you do, have to blow up the balloons. You got to blow up like five balloons every day, and then uh, mm-hmm. yeah, just poke around, c- cut off any dead dead yeah. flowers, and you're done. And that's all she did. That she was didn't. It. She didn't stock shelves or anything. Yeah. When she wasn't. She'd flirt with the produce guy every once in a while. Oh yeah, he was a big ugly ogre. I'm like, what? What are you seeing him? Because you don't even give me the time of day, and I'm like young and slightly attractive. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Maybe she just um, looked at him as being safe. Yeah, maybe. And you as being dangerous. Maybe. <laughs> it wasn't the coolest look to have an apron on. Pushing, uh, you don't car- think? Pushing carts in the store. <laughs> With baby doo-doo in them. Yeah. Oh, that's what thing. I wanted to ask you about. So Regan said something this morning on our uh, regular old radio show that um, that he, he had to do when he was working at the grocery store. So I want to find out more about that. <laughs> it wasn't a pleasant job. No. It doesn't sound like. So we'll do that next. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash calitrin, order three months, and then you'll get three months free. Four months, four months free. That's how it works with calitrin. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong, because this year you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. Welcome back, world, to TJ's podcast. podcast. So, uh, my buddy Riggins. Hey. Hey, (laughs) y'all. Here's what we're doing today. (laughs) He used to work at a grocery store. Would it be considered a Mega Mart or no? Probably not. The the grocery store you worked at? Mega Mart. I don't know what what would qualify as a Mega Mart. I don't think so. I think it's a a grocery store that's really, really big. Oh. I think. Um. And then part of his job was to go collect the um, shopping carts, a.k.a. buggies, you yeah. know, to a lot of my southern brethren and sistren buggies. He would get them, and then uh, sometimes in the little seat where the babies um, are, they uh, had had blowout diapers and, and accidents in the grocery cart, and you had to clean it. Yeah. How did, Knowing you and... and um, being around you for so many years, I cannot even imagine you doing that. Really? No, I just can't. I, I, I would imagine it would come. I would come closer to believing that the first time it ever happened, you went out to collect the grocery carts in the rack out in the parking lot, and you saw one had doo doo in it, and you told the manager, and he said, "Well, you're going to have to clean that," or she said, "You're going to have to clean that," and you just saying, "I quit." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I had to clean the bathrooms, too. I've had to clean yeah. the bathrooms at every job except for this one. But that's a little different than just uh, knowing that sometimes. you're directly cleaning poop off of, off of a solid surface. Yeah, it happens more than I expected because I've had to deal with poop a couple of times. Yeah. So in, how, in how would you clean it? So you'd take it to the back. Uh, around the store don't bring it in through the front right. take it to the back hose it down okay first. i didn't know if y'all had a hose back there or yeah, not. yeah yeah because yeah, okay. that's how you'd fill up the mop buckets yeah. and stuff you'd go to the back and they had this you know, maintenance sense. section of the of the warehouse part and uh yeah you'd hose it off first and then you had this sort of indiscriminate cleaning product that they purchased and it was blue in color and you would douse the whole thing 
Um, and that's not so bad if you yeah, got a hose. Yeah, we got a hose to hose it. Yeah, it wasn't like scraping it <laughs> off with our fingernails. Uh, so, but it was t- disgusting because yeah. you had to wheel it all the way back and it stunk. It was sitting mm-hmm. out in the sun. You know, it's metal. Yeah, so it would reek. Um, and especially if it was like the fifth one in there, you know, oh, of, yeah. of the stack of carts. And it probably sometimes would get on other ones. Sure. You know. Yeah. So you, you you bring them all, you hose them down, you spray them off, and then set it to the side to dry. And then um, I don't know that they went back into rotation immediately. I think it was just kind of keep the, keep this in the section with the other broken carts. And then when the, the maintenance people come every six to months to a year, they collect oh. them and bring them back. I would see, though, if you're disinfecting it with the cleaner and all of that, it could go back in. Yeah. You know. Maybe they just didn't trust me. Like, <laughs> we'll, just, we'll double check your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll get disgusting. somebody else to give it a once over. Yeah. It was nasty. So, um, yeah, we were talking about that and uh, Riggins advising people not to put food in the little section where children sit. That's the tip. Sit and shit is what they do. Sit and <laughs> Don't ever do it because I don't care. Even if, if, if you know that there was poop on that surface, you would never use that in your house, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, never put your f- food in that section, you know, up front, which uh, you see everybody doing until they know that little fact. Yeah. Uh, and especially if you go to the grocery store and you go to the first section, which oftentimes is produce. Yeah. And deli. And deli. <laughs> produce deli, you know, and... Those rotisserie chickens. Absolutely. Hopefully you put your produce in those plastic bags, but some people don't. You know, they'll grab mm. a pineapple, sit it right in there, or a watermelon, a can Bananas? Of bananas. You ever put bananas in a bag? Never. I don't either. Never. So... Be careful. <laughs> Could be feces on there. <laughs> uh, that wasn't the craziest thing, though, uh, that I had to do at that job. The other crazy thing was bringing the cookies out to put at the front, the free cookies, and watch like a line form, like it was a Costco sample. Oh, yeah. People waiting for I'm like, they're out of the freezer. These are rock hard, and you're sitting there waiting for the new cookies to be put out. Adults. Yeah. Now, who would get the free cookies and, and be more rabid? about the free cookies um moms with little kids or old people every That's time i'm question. in that store yeah. and they and there's the, the free cookie thing sits out there and the grocery store that we're talking about has um their little mascot is a dragon yeah and there's the dragon cartoon dragon and it says um kids of all ages kids of all ages and then something about take one or something yeah please leave something for the next kid in line or something along those lines right so they had to put kids of all ages because so many adults were and this is to show you how pathetic our society is so many adults were bitching about not being able to get a free cookie right that the kids are supposed to be eating it's it's put there to help parents keep their kids under control while they're in the grocery store yeah. give them a cookie just let them settle down let them you know let them look forward to coming to the grocery store just like when banks give out suckers you know yeah. for the kids in the in the drive through uh but adults abusing the system <laughs> abusing the 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 free item it was just disgusting uh, so they had to put that of all ages yeah. on there to try to let them know this is just for kids but you know kids of all ages if you're an adult and you must have one then we can't stop you Exactly. And, and but it I always was, see old people, though, doing it. it. So there was two different problems. So the, it was definitely the mom with the kids that would abuse the cookie thing because they'd take, oh, I got kids at home or something. And yeah. they'd grab a stack of them. Ugh. And it's like, it's, it's not against the rules, but come on, give me a break. Mm-hmm. Uh, the old people, we had a system where if you used your loyalty card, you would earn points towards, and I don't even know if they do this anymore, you can get a, like a new crock pot oh, yeah. or a, um, a a tent, you know, like outdoor party tent. Yeah, we've gotten some good prizes from that. Sure. And my grandparents used to use it all the time, but the the old people would give you the hassles when they're using that card. They wanted to make sure that their points were being added to their account. So it would be the same people every time. And you scan my card, right, because I'm earning points. And you go, yes, I'm sure. They, <laughs> and I was a bagger. I wasn't uh-huh. even ringing up their stuff. But they'd make the point to bring it up to each of us, the cashier and the bagger. And I'm, that, that's going on my point. That's going on my card, right, those points, because I'm trying to get the, the tent. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Constant. So, yeah, less annoying. I just want to make sure it? you're doing what you're supposed to do and not, exactly. not cheating me out of anything. Yeah. yeah. Old people have their own issues. Can I get double mm-hmm. paper? Double paper bags for my groceries? You're like, uh. oh, my God. I'll, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and not too heavy. 
and not too heavy. <laughs> okay, great. So you want 45 bags for your six cans of Campbell's soup? <laughs> Crazy. But it was a learning experience. I loved it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're doing something where you're in the middle of the general public, there's no better lesson that you can learn no. about dealing with society. And the, the quick turnover of customers, mm -hmm. like bam, bam, bam. It was in, interesting interactions every day. I loved it. Yeah. and But then you do have the regulars and you know, okay, here comes double bag. Yeah, exactly. You know, here's a double bagger. Real pain in the mm. But, I mean, standing there and taking a stack of cookies, the free cookies, and saying, I have kids at home. Well, they're not for your kids at home. Yeah. These kids you got with you in the store should be eating a cookie right now. So the ones at yeah. home aren't even going to know that they missed out on cookies. And if they want cookies, they'll come with you to the grocery store. We sell them. We sell. Yeah. If you want to bring food home, we you're in a grocery store. That's the whole point of this operation. <laughs> it's for the patient kid that has to go with his mom or dad shopping. Yeah. Give them a little cookie to tide them over. We um, we had this um, this woman when we were doing uh, remote appearances and stuff for the radio station, every Saturday, uh, she would, during the week, she would find out where every radio station in town was going to be doing a remote broadcast, like at a car dealership or, you know, uh, when you'll hear, it used to be more than it is now. On Saturdays, you would hear the radio station um, out on location at car dealerships, at appliance stores, at, you know, just various businesses, furniture stores. And um, this woman would find out every radio station in town where they were going to be. And all of these setups, they have sponsors who provide food. Like there'll be free pizza from um, Pizza Hut at this one. There'll be barbecue from you know boss hogs barbecue at this one and you know all of them had different yeah. sponsors she would take her kids i know you know this story riggins i'm telling to the peoples uh take her kids and tupperware containers to every one of these appearances and fill them up with the free food that they had at at these radio station remote broadcasts just Hey, and she, you know, everybody knew her. She didn't care. No shame. Right. All the radio people knew her. Okay, here comes. Uh, and uh, I don't know why no one ever told her. You can't this. You can't take stuff to go. You can't come in here and just fill up Tupperware containers full of stuff. Was she hard up? I mean, no, no, no. Just this I is the it. same type of person that's going to grab a dozen of the free cookies that the kids are there in the store to eat. That type of person. Like, if it's free, I'm going to get it. Till they tell me to stop there's no shame unbelievable unbelievable and then they you know they're also the type that would uh would throw it back at you if you try to tell them hey, look there's you can't have all of that uh, you didn't say that you said we've got we've got free pizza hut come by and get your free pizza hut Ugh. just makes you lose faith in, uh -huh. in, in humanity now, if it's a contest on the radio, there are limitations. You can only win, um, you know, so many days. Like, you, if you win, you got to wait. Yeah, I think it's thirty days before you can play another contest or win another contest, and other. But not with this stuff. It's just go, go, go get all you want. If it's free, it's for me. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you look at pe people like that more um, with disgust or pity. Disgust, because yeah. you know better. Mm -hmm. Pity is Just taking is, advantage of something. Yeah, pity is reserved for really people down on their luck and yeah. uh, that don't know any better. They don't know any better, and uh, yeah, no, that's disgust. But no, she wasn't down on her luck. Yeah, that's just embarrassing, and the fact that nobody—I mean, I give you credit for biting your lip or biting your tongue, but God, it would be hard for me. I'm like, you do this every. Yeah. Oh. Well, it wasn't our place to do it. You know, it was the you know, well, the, the managers place there or whoever was in charge of the of the setup out there most we're the, just we're just the ones talking yeah most of the times i get into trouble it's not my place to say something <laughs> and I, I just can't help myself it's never my place to say anything now is that worse or than the lady when we were on the radio in huntsville alabama every morning we did a birthday contest it's called the birthday balls and uh we were the yeah the um 
the station owner, when we got hired, he said, I'm not going to tell you anything you have to do or don't have to do when it comes to, you know, picking out your content or any of that. But you have to keep my birthday balls contest. And it was one other one other thing that that he liked that was he thought was good. And it was. Uh, so every morning at a certain time, we'd reach into a, a box full of ping pong balls that had numbers on them and draw out. You know, today's birthday for one hundred and ten dollars. We gave away one hundred and ten dollars every morning. Um, no, one hundred and four dollars. I'm sorry, because it was one hundred four point three. So one hundred and four dollars. Today's birthday is August fifth. August fifth. If that's your birthday, you got however many minutes to call and whatnot. So there was a woman who would sit there every morning and listen for that contest, and she had a list of all her friends' birthdays and family members and all of that. And if um, one of those birthdays got called, she would call, and I'd recognize her. We'd recognize her voice every time. Uh, hey, when, what is your name? And then she would give her friend's name mm. and then say, when is your birthday? August 5th. Congratulations. You won $104. So then her friend, who's working, not listening to the radio, would come pick up her money and probably split it with the lady or yeah. may, maybe even just – keep the hundred and four dollars herself but yeah she always you could tell her voice because you know we had that things they are uh, what's your favorite radio station and uh and it was the same way every time One oh four point three wzyp uh, no Great. no that's but you can't prove it yeah it'd be it, uh, to me as the program director i'd be like we got to switch up the game a little bit if, the, if she ends up winning so much like is there a tweak we can do to make it i don't know but I guess you know what's. I guess the lesson is that scammers will find a way. Mm -hmm. You know, people that want to take advantage of a system will find a way. Yeah, because she knew that was wrong. That's not how the game was intended to be played. Sure. It's dishonest. One hundred four point three WZYP. No, this is uh, Jerry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, I swear it is. It's annoying. So many times I wanted to say, wait, I thought. The other day when you called, you said your name was Sarah. Yeah. And today your, your name's Judy. Yeah. Huh? You know, she <laughs> no. Mm. Uh uh. <laughs> you and me mistaken. WZYP. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for uh, listening and, and watching and doing all you do. Um, don't forget to go fill out the uh, survey at acetj.com slash fanatico to become an official tj fanatico we would appreciate that big events coming hopefully for you to be getting special invitations for you notice i said invitations and not invites Ooh. because invitation is uh, a noun and invite is a verb don't get that mixed up please so annoying <laughs> uh, and uh, consult is also a verb not a noun so you don't go for a consult you go for a consultation got more of this if you want more of this type of stuff <laughs> then i can i can really satisfy uh, and scratch that itch for you <laughs> all right love you bye serving the world it's tj's podcast